is Rod Powell. You are back with uh, You Should Get a License podcast edition, your number one source for information, education, and inspiration on what I feel is the most underrated career opportunity in business today, and that is a career in the insurance industry. Today, we have a, a very special guest. It's, it's going to be such a hot interview when you see the, the video. He's sitting next to the fire alarm because we might need to pull it with all of the heat that's going to be coming out of this, this conversation. But in all seriousness, uh, this gentleman is, is someone who, you know, I, I've met uh, this really this year, but uh, have developed a, a lot of respect for uh, very active in the community as well. Uh, he's been in the business for over half a decade uh, at this point. He's a veteran, you know, served in the military and uh, also a fellow alumni of Strayer University like myself. You know, so I want to bring him on and, and speak about, you know, his area of the business. He is a, a financial services professional, uh, and that is Mr. Lawrence Roberts. Lawrence, welcome to the conversation. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Doing very well. Hey, first, uh, thank you for being here. You know, um, you are right now, as we're speaking, you know, conducting a, a, a workshop, you know, for veterans, uh, and, and, and budding entrepreneurs, you know, who may be entering into, you know, the in, insurance careers or their own entrepreneurial in, endeavors and uh, so, so appropriate. So I know that uh, you adjusted your location, you know, for the signal. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. But, uh, I, you know, this, this forum is really to, you know, educate and expose individuals to opportunities that exist, you know, in this industry uh, that has affected the lives of, of many, both clients and professionals. I want to speak a little bit about, you know, your area of specialty and, and really what you do. So can you tell me a little bit, even before we get into your background, tell me a little bit about your area of, of specialty, what you focus on in the market and, and, and where you work in this insurance space? Wow. And, and you know, I don't want to say it's a, I focus on everything because I don't. What I focus on mainly is life insurance protection. And the life insurance is not just life insurance and that's it, because I also focus on making sure you have retirement planning. Retirement planning consists of having funds for retirement. And be it, you know, we create a, um, a, a bucket of money, be it from some type of annuity or an investment, a Roth, or even college planning. Because if your children are secure, you're going to spend your retirement money making sure your babies are taken care of. That's important. Just the same as planning for retirement, you put all this money aside and we didn't capture something for long-term care. We, we missed it because now what happens then? You got to go to a long-term care facility and all that money you set aside is gone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So really what you help people do is make sure that they're planning you know, for those life events that are pretty much going to be inevitable, right? Like, yes. We know everybody's going to die. We, we know this. This is a, this is a guaranteed fact. Um, nowadays, you know, with people living longer and sometimes needing, you know, a, a special type of care facility, you know, a, a nursing, nursing facility as they get older, uh, those are, are expensive. Those are expensive. And what you do is make sure that folks are also prepared for that, so if you if you have that longevity in your family, and it comes time where you know your your family can't do it all, and they need some additional support, uh, you're able to 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 afford you know the right kind of facility you know to take care of your family as well. Is that correct? Exactly, because if you really look at it, this is this is where many people do long term care, and this plan doesn't always work. Okay, we're gonna have a family meeting. We're gonna right. get together. You do this. You do this. Uh, what day you have? And you and I both know that don't always work out, always work out. Yes. Because we got family traveling, family moving out of town. We got family members that are just playing irresponsible. Yes. Or they're responsible, but they're not going to be responsible for taking care of mom or dad. Not like that. Yeah. So it's better to put some money aside so that you don't, <clears throat> we're not worried about um, burdening someone else. Now they can just manage from afar. See, you know, th there's a lot, a, a lot of folks, you know, that need to, you know, get educated um, about this, um, particularly in, in our community, because, you know, that that is how the family meeting goes. However, it typically ends up being one sibling 
who is taking on the majority of that responsibility exactly. a lot exactly right and then they're trying to you know pull for other family members to to really get involved in that process so before before we talk about how you you know got into this arena uh, of protection and and making sure that uh, the, the legacy is is going to be protected um I want to go all, all the way back. Now you're from you're from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yes. Okay. All right. So growing up, you know, I, I know there was a high standard in, in your household. You know, for for uh, academics and you know everyone had to be you know on on point. So I want to go all the way back. I want to go all the way back to a, a, a nine year old Lawrence Roberts. Okay. What was your dream job? Growing up, I really don't even remember. <laughs> it surely wasn't this. It might have been a police officer, or I, I used to want to be a lawyer at one point. Then I talked to another guy who's an attorney, and he was talking about reading. I said, No, I don't like reading that much. So it changed so many times. <laughs> but I do know one thing uh, my mother did not allow us to come home with a C, and is that saying that it was acceptable? My mother was a school teacher. We might have lived in the projects, but our mindset wasn't pro project mentality. Yes. You have to excel. That's the, is that the best you could do as a C? Mm -hmm. You got to do better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, no mediocrity. No. Also, at all. No. Well, so if it wasn't insurance, it probably would have ended up being an attorney, you know, or, or, or something to, to that effect. But, yeah. um, but you did end up, you know, spending some time in the military, you know, so I, I want to talk a little bit about that first, you know, thank, thank you for your service. I mean, 20, 22 years, correct? Yes. 22 okay. years. So, so tell me, tell me about that journey. You know, as you were, you were, you were growing up, how'd you end up, you know, going to the military in your military career? And, 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 and then after that, how'd you end up transitioning into the insurance industry? Wow. Well, I graduated high school like most high school kids. I knew everything because I knew better than more than my parents, my grandparents. I didn't want to go to college. I, I just wanted to get a job. Well, that lasted about a year. Then I went on to school, I, but I couldn't go to school in Philadelphia. I had to travel to Pittsburgh to go to school. Hmm. I still had some growing up to do. I'm gonna give you the short story on it. Still had some growing up to do. So I worked and lived in Pittsburgh, but my jobs always were in the restaurant. I started out as a dishwasher, moved up, and so on and so on like that. One of the cooks at one of the restaurants said, hey, you're not really doing much, man. You know, look at me. I'm getting old. You need to do something more with your life. You need to check out the military. I looked at him, and I looked at what, where I was in, in the um, restaurant and everything. I knew I wasn't a manager. I wasn't running the back kitchen. So I said, okay, I'll go check it out. Short story, you know, fast forward. I joined. And even when I joined, I still knew more than the recruiter. The right. recruiter said, talk to me about this job or that job. Nah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want that. And I just, I wanted money for college because I wanted to pay for my college because I was going to school. And I learned that while I was out there in Pittsburgh, I wasn't doing nothing but wasting time and money because I had no direction. I wasn't, wasn't focused. It wasn't disciplined. So that's where the discipline came in. I had to go join the military, get some more discipline and grow up some. Wow. And what people feel to realize, not that I'm making a pitch for the military and everything, but rea reality, every job in the military pays the same. You could be a cook, you could be an infantryman, you could be an office clerk. You're still getting paid the same, have the same benefits. It's how you, what you do to get those benefits. That's all that matters. And reality, and I, I moved up in the rank. Look, I told a young soldier, so look, let me tell you something. Y'all worried about the wrong thing here. If they wanted me to, you know, mop this floor up, I'm getting paid to mop that floor. You know what I do when I finish mopping that floor? I'm going to the sink, get some more water, put it on that floor so I can mop up some more. So I can do that all day and get paid. And then when it's time to go, good day. I'm going to leave. You might be telling some secrets that, uh, you know, they may not want to tell, you know, that people going to mop the flow to it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, we did some of that, too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. but, um, 
not to not to not to interrupt because I, I want to continue. I want to continue this path, you know, through the military because I know you did Mont, Mont Floyd for twenty. No, but um, I do want to know. Pittsburgh is a is a, is is a quite a ways away from Philadelphia to work in a restaurant. I I do want to know how you ended up in Pittsburgh from Philadelphia. If it I wasn't, went to, I went to Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. Okay, all right. I was going to be the electronics that learn how to work the electronics of the aircraft. Nice. I can make all this money. I can do all this money. And I'd be rich. Yes. This is how my day went. I went to school. I went home, and I went to work. Then I realized one day when I, I had, they had no work, all I had was homework. I wasn't doing it. Mm. That's when I said, "I'm doing nothing. I'm wasting my time and money. I need to do something else." Yeah. yeah, I wasn't chasing the girls a whole lot, eh, a little bit. You know, I'm not a total stranger. Right. So, <laughs> it, it wasn't to the point where that was my consuming my every waking hour. Yeah, and like I said, I remember specifically one day I came home. I had homework to do and things to study for. I just had no desire to do it. Mm. That's when the reality hit me. I don't need to be here. Yeah, I need to do something more. That's important. That's important for you know, people who are listening to here, because, you know, when you, when we, when we start on our, our journey, you know, in our life, um, sometimes we may have a certain objective, you know, that we're working towards and they're going to be, they're going to be detours. Right. And right. That, that path, you know, can change. So I wanted you to talk about that because, you know, I know that there are people who are listening, you know, re recent high school graduate, or a recent college graduate e even, and they may be thinking, hey, you know, I'm going down a certain kind of career path, but then they go down that, that path and they realize, you know, this really isn't, isn't for me. You know, there might be another aeronautics uh, engineer, you know, who's, who's working on this and realize that, hey, you know, I'm just, this isn't, this isn't resonating with me the way that I thought it would. And understanding that, hey, there, there are other options, you know, that are available for you. If you ask, if you ask me, I would say, hey, go get your insurance license and then you can, you know, start to excel from that point, you know, but uh, everyone is going to have, have that path. So I wanted you to speak to that just a little bit um, as well. But yes, so, so, so take me through. So, so you were in school, you, you left school to work full time. I can't imagine that you had much time for, for females at that point, because you're working, going to school, uh, and, and you're trying to study as well. So you probably didn't, I mean, aeronautics engineer, that's that's a lot of work, so. It was like trying to the aircraft. I went to a vocational high school, but I still had to study. Yes. I was a lazy student gotcha. and I didn't form those good study habits like I should have, but I could have did it. I just, sure. how can I say, if I had to sum it up right now, I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do as an adult student. Yeah. So I get it. And that's what I tell people, look, going to college is not about paying for it, all the other stuff. Yeah, anybody can go to college. You have to be able to go there and do what you're supposed to do when no one else is there to tell you, hey, did you do your homework? Did you yes. study for the exam? Did you do this? Did you do that? That's on you. You're that's an true. adult. That's true. Then once you get your degree, don't feel so, hey. Life ends, like you just kind of alluded to that earlier. What that degree says is this, you're trainable. Mm -hmm. That's it, bottom line, you are trainable. That's right. You can be trained in that career field or you can do something totally left, but you are trainable because you completed it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I, and I, and I feel you on the, the, student, the student part as well, you know, um, because it has to be something that you want to do. I mean, look, you know, the insurance industry, it's, it's not rocket science, right? No. I don't know if it's aeronautics, but uh, it's not easy either. I mean, you have to have some, some mental, some degree of mental capacity in order to do this business and, and find solutions for people. Uh, so, I, I mean, I know you're a smart guy just, just dealing with you. And, and, and uh, no, I could have very well been, been speaking to an aeronautics engineer right now. 